Hello, I'm Susan Black. In this episode of Joseph, my colleagues from Brigham Young University, along with scholars from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, will continue to explore the life of the Prophet Joseph Smith. We will examine his persecution in Hiram, Ohio, the mission of Zion's camp, the school of the prophets, and the building of the Kirtland Temple, the years 1832 to 1836, on this episode of Joseph. Shortly after the organization of the church, missionaries were sent to spread the gospel. They found much success in Kirtland, Ohio. Soon after Joseph's arrival in Kirtland, the Lord revealed to him the location of Zion in Missouri, where he dedicated a temple site. He then returned to Ohio and moved his family here to the John Johnson farmhouse in Hiram. It was in this house that Joseph found a quiet, peaceful place where he could continue his work on the Bible translation. But the peace that Joseph found did not last, although he had endured much persecution before. Nothing compared to what was awaiting him here in Hiram. Early on in Joseph's life, he was informed that uh, his name would be had for good and evil. Joseph's lot in life was persecution. He faced a great deal of it. Throughout his life, there were many incidences and events that bodily harm was a result of the persecution. But most of it was uh, those people who didn't understand the church and for some reason or another thought they ought to take matters in their own hand. Joseph Smith was living during a period of intense intolerance in America. Even though America was known as a land of liberty, it had a history of intolerance. And while Joseph Smith was living in Ohio, many, many people of various faiths and many people of different cultures were persecuted. People tend to be persecuted who were different. People were persecuted who were considered to be threats of society, and thus the Mormons were targets, the Masons were targets, the Indians were targets, the abolitionists were targets, the Catholics were targets. All of these people were persecuted. They were mobbed, their homes were burned, they were tarred and feathered. So Joseph was living at a time when it was custom, it was not unusual for people to get excited, especially under the influence of liver, under the influence of liquor. They say, let's get, let's get the Mormons. And this happened in Ohio. All sorts of vicious lies have been circulated in the newspapers, especially the Painesville Telegraph about the Mormons. Why some of these editors have prepared a list of derogatory terms, and they use the same terms to attack the Catholics and the Masons as they used to attack the Mormons. And thus it's not surprising that a group organized, two who were ringleaders, or organizing people against the Mormons and circulating lies against the Mormons, were two former members, Ezra Booth and Simon's Ryder. Both had entered baptismal covenants. Both at one point showed momentary faithfulness, but both had an occasion to turn their heel against the prophet Joseph Smith. For, uh, for them, they viewed Joseph as an arch deceiver. Ezra Booth wrote a series of letters uh, decrying the evils of what he saw of Mormonism and as for Simon's writer, he was viewed as the leader in the tarring and feathering of Joseph Smith. Because of the ill feelings that were being circulated in the Hiram area by Simon's writer and Booth and others, 
it was necessary for Joseph and Sidney to discontinue work on the translation of the Bible, and they and others went forth preaching to try to counteract the opposition that was developing. But the preaching was not that successful, because in March 1832, a mob of about 50 angry men attacked the John Johnson farmhouse. First, they attacked the log cabin where Sidney Rigdon and his family was living. They took Sidney Rigdon from the home. They dragged him along the icy turf. His body was lacerated. He was nearly killed. They attacked him and they covered him with tar and feathers. And then they went into the Johnson home to seize Joseph Smith. Near midnight, the twins, who had been very ill, they'd been suffering from measles. Joseph and Emma had walked the floor, but Emma had suggested that Joseph now lay down in the trundle bed and she would continue the vigil. But suddenly breaking into her room will be about a dozen men. She screams murder. Obviously this awakens Joseph. The men now begin to pull at him. I found myself going out of the door in the hands of about a dozen men, some of whose hands were in my hair, and some had hold of my shirt, drawers, and limbs. They passed along with me about 30 rods from the house. I saw Elder Rigdon stretched out on the ground, whither they had dragged him by his heels. I supposed he was dead. The people began to show themselves in every direction. One coming from the orchard had a plank, and I expected they would kill me and carry me off on the plank. They held a council, and as I could occasionally overhear a word, I supposed it was to know whether or not it was best to kill me. They returned after a while, when I learned that they had concluded not to kill me, but to beat and scratch me well, tear off my shirt and drawers, and leave me naked. The lawless mob seemed uncontrolled that night. Plans to carry out a castration of Joseph as they placed him on planks was attempted. The knife fell out of the doctor's hand, a man named Dr. Dennison. Dr. Dennison had pulled out a vial of nitric acid and had attempted to force it into Joseph's mouth. In the process, he chipped one of Joseph's teeth, and uh, the question was, where's the tar bucket? Uh, tar uh, was, uh, was something that was readily available on the frontier. People had, uh, most of their homes were of logs, and to make their homes weather tight, they had this tar uh, buckets they'd have outside of their homes, and they'd make a mixture of tar mixing in leaves, and they could make their homes weather tight. In the case of Joseph Smith, he will be tarred and feathered. The mobs didn't always tar and feather. Most of them just tarred their victims. But in the case of Joseph Smith, he's tarred and feathered, meaning that you tarred him by, Joseph will indicate, a paddle was put in his mouth that had the tar, and then they would take the bucket and they would splash the tar out over the body then they opened up a pillow that was taken out of Sidney Rigdon's home and the feathers that came down then were to show that they mocked the man. They mocked Joseph Smith, they mocked Mormonism, they mocked what he stood for. This mob had no idea that they were mocking a prophet of God. When I came to the door I was naked and the tar made me look as if I were covered with blood. And when my wife saw me, she thought I was all mashed to pieces and fainted. During the affray abroad, the sisters of the neighborhood had collected at my room. I called for a blanket. They threw me one and shut the door. I wrapped it around me and went in. My friends spent the night in scraping and removing the tar and washing and cleansing my body so that by morning I was ready to be clothed again. This being the Sabbath morning, the people assembled for meeting at the usual hour of worship, and among them came also the mobbers. With my flesh all scarified and defaced, I preached to the congregation as usual, and in the afternoon of the same day baptized three individuals. 
You may recall that Joseph had twins that were 11 months old. 